I'm Scott of Scotty's Gunworks, and what I thought I'd do today is make a quick gun clean video. This is how I do it down here. This is my technique. Uh, it's just a uh, you know a gun that I've done took it apart, and if I'd have thought I'd have uh, showed myself taking it apart, but I will show myself cleaning it and show myself reassembling it. And what it is, it's a, uh, a single action 22 revolver. So what I'll do is I'll get the camera all set up and I'll kind of go over some steps that I use to uh, clean guns. All right, here we are at the bench. I've done took the gun apart and of course the finish is uh, kind of uh, rubbed off on it. It's a uh, aluminum frame, aluminum grip frame. Uh, even got the aluminum barrel on it and aluminum cylinder. It's got the steel uh, sleeves in it though, or inserts. And this gun right here is really dirty. It's been well used. Uh, Mechanically, it's still in really good shape. So what I've done is I've taken it completely apart because it was in desperate need of a good cleaning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fill me up a, a little vat of uh, cleaner. And basically all it is is Dawn dishwashing liquid. I hand clean everything. And then I completely dry it. And then I reassemble it. And of course what I'll do, this isn't a refinishing job. We're just gonna basically give it a good cleaning and we're gonna re-put it back together and then we're gonna test fire it. Uh, you know, things like this rust on this hammer. I guess y'all can see that. You know, I'll go ahead and clean that rust off and you know, put the polish back on it like it had on it when it was uh, new. Um, clean the front of the cylinder, you know, things like that. Make sure all the parts are clean and uh, put back together. So what I'll do is I will, uh, since I've done got it taken apart, I'll go ahead and uh, take my little brush here and I'll just kind of knock off anything that's loose. And I've got a little, a little uh, wheel, a little nylon wheel over here at the end of the uh, workbench here that sometimes I use. But basically you just want to kind of knock off anything that's loose. You ain't really got to do this step right here. You can just do this right here while it's in the uh, the vat of uh, detergent. But I always just like to just kind of go over everything, making sure I didn't forget any little small parts and leave them in there because you don't want to lose anything. And So with this particular gun right here, I've got a little system set up. I've got me one of these trays here that's got a magnet at the bottom of it. And, you know, always uh, stage it like I'm holding the gun this way. Of course, I'll take it apart. And then all the screws I've got put right screw goes in the right side, left screw goes in the left side and in the front. Kind of got them laid out that way. And I kind of do this on all guns I take apart because I like to put the screws back in the holes they came out of because usually they're they're fitted. Some of them, you know, on the left-hand side might be just a slight bit longer than the ones on the right side. Um, they've got them that way for a reason. Different guns do uh, different or put in different ways, but... Um, that's kind of the way I like to do that. And of course, I'll, I'll clean up all the screws. And if the screws are kind of boogered up, I'll, I'll reface them, you know, before I put them back in the gun. That's just kind of part of the cleaning uh, process. So I'll get the uh, detergent all set up and uh, we'll go in there and I'll just put some of the parts. And I won't put them all in the detergent, but I'll put uh, like the grip frame, the frame. Uh, I'll clean these grips up. They've got mold growing on them on the inside. Even got some mold growing on inside the grip frame. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, uh, as a rule of thumb, when I, I clean a gun, uh, I'd rather just go ahead and take it completely down. That way I can see everything and make sure everything's going to uh, function and be serviceable. So we'll uh, go in there in the uh, where the sink is and set the little vat up with the detergent in it and uh, we'll start cleaning these parts. Okay, here we are. It's been close to 10 minutes. Uh, got them uh, saturated in this detergent here. And I think what I'm going to do for the remainder of the 10 minutes, I've got the, uh, the hammer here. And what I'll do is I'll go over to the wire wheel and I'll just kind of get in here where the nulling is on the hammer spur itself. Uh, and of course, it's going to take a little bit of blue and off, but it don't matter because this gun right here needs to be refinished anyway. He just wanted it cleaned up where he could use it. He wasn't too worried about the finish. So what I would do is I just kind of rinse the suds and stuff off right here. You know, get the suds off of it. And what we'll do is I'll just bring the camera over here. Try to position this right here where you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. the 
the best way to get the uh, the rust out of the uh, null and, and the hammer and all the little spots you can't get to. What I like to do when I clean a gun, I always like to get the rust off of it. In other words, if the body's got rust on it on the outside, I'll try to get all that rust off. You know, I won't be refinishing it or anything by taking pits out, but I'll at least knock the loose rust off and kind of clean the pits out with a wire wheel, depending on the situation. And then what I'll do is I'll go back over it with a little cold bluing, just kind of refresh it a little bit. That kind of, uh, that's kind of uh, part of the cleaning process. Of course, you're not going to get these dark spots off this hammer right here with this wire wheel. Uh, we'll get the loose rust off, and that's really the purpose of the wire wheel. So what I would do to get that off, I would come over here. With this wheel right here. And what I do is, the uh, brush marks are a long ways, kind of off towards the spur and I'll try to follow those same brush marks just keeping it as flat as you can There is the before, and there's the after. And basically what I've done is I've just put the sheen back on it. There is still some pits left in that hammer, but he's not paying me to refinish it. He's just paying me to clean it. So I'm just cleaning up the pits. And I do try to get them out. If they're real light, I'll go ahead and take them out, you know, if I'm since I'm over here at the wheel. But I'll go ahead and get this other side done. And uh, we'll kind of go over this hammer here again and the detergent, clean it up real good. And what I may do... Uh, just depends on the situation. I may put a little cold blue on this end right up in here, but in this case here, it doesn't really, it probably isn't necessary because I'm not going to hit this area right here with the uh, polishing wheel. I'm going to just kind of leave that dark because I believe originally that's the way that looked anyway. So anyway, we'll take it back over to this little wheel here and I'll get this side right here cleaned up. Try to get over here, get this a little closer where you can see more about what I'm doing here. Be a little bit better. Basically, just put it on there flat. And sometimes you'll see me turning the hammer because I don't want to knock off my sharp corners. If there's a pit in there, I'll try to get that pit out. And of course, if you get the pit out, you'll want to turn the hammer a little bit because you don't want to knock off any of the corners here you want to keep everything sharp and then you can reroute that brush mark like it was originally you can see there how it's kind of how the brush marks are going in every different direction. Now, that's because I just wanted to make sure I kept the corner sharp. It had some pits right in there, and it was pretty deep, pretty noticeable. So I'm trying to go the extra step, get them pits out. That's why I'm going in all different directions, uh, making sure I don't uh, knock these sharp edges on. We want to keep that as sharp as we can. I've got all the pits out. There's still some light pits still in there, so we won't bother with them. Now we'll go ahead and put the original brush mark back in. There we 
looks really nice. It's cleaned up nice. It's gonna look good in the gun. So the gun needs to, uh, to be refinished. He just wants to clean it up and just keep it serviceable. So that's what we're gonna do here. My advice would be to Cerakote it, because it's aluminum. Hell yeah. That's kind of an idea right there. There's the hammer. It's cleaned back up. Got most of the pits out. There's still some slight pits in there. And like I say, I may go on over a little cold blue and kind of touch this side right here up. And sometimes the cold blue get on the the white here where I've done cleaned it up and then I'm just come back here and heat it again uh, that's kind of optional sometimes I'll do that sometimes I won't in this case right here it's really pretty dark right there so I might just leave that alone we'll go back over here to the uh, the soaking vat where the detergent is and we'll take uh, the gun out and start cleaning it get this camera back located how we had it there we go. So we'll put that back in there. That's basically all we want to do here is just take this little brush right here. Kind of clean everything up real good. I like to hand clean everything. They've got the ultrasonic cleaners and stuff like that. And that does a really good job. But I don't know, to me, this, this just does a better job by hand cleaning everything. That way I can keep an eye on everything. And, uh, of course, put everything back together when it's all done, obviously. And making sure I don't put something in there that might have been overlooked. This right here is the only way that I've ever found to make sure that you put everything back in there like it's supposed to be and everything is clean when you put it back in there. I've seen folks just partially take them down and put them in the ultrasonic cleaner and that does a good job but I don't know this right here to me I know it's going to do a good job. Just take some of the guesswork out of it. This is a fine uh, little revolver here. If it was mine I believe I would Cerakote it. And I may suggest that, but I don't think he wants to do all that. I think he just wants to get it back in the action, which it was working. This right here, just a good cleaning. It definitely, definitely needed a good cleaning. Of course, I'll run a board brush through there and everything when we get ready to uh, put it back together. And sometimes you may want to go over there with the wire wheel and hit the inside of this, but it's cleaning up really nice. A lot of times what happens is that uh, oil, if you don't clean your guns, you know, on a regular basis, it'll, it'll, it'll set up and turn into like a varnish. And what will happen is it'll get to where the little parts, it'll start gluing the parts together and they won't, they won't move freely. This particular gun here, the uh, cylinder pin was stuck. And it wasn't because there was any kind of uh, worn part or anything. The oil just turned into like a, a glue. So I just soaked it in some solvent and it broke it loose and got that out of there with no problem. clean every piece of course I've got the bore brush and the uh, chamber brush and everything I'll use for the, the chamber and the bore and that's something I like to do last Well, especially pay close, pay close attention to these little little lock windows here on your cylinders. Want to make sure that there's no uh, debris down inside of them. Got some pretty roughed up aluminum right there in that area right there. You know, if he's going to refinish this, I'd polish all that back down smooth and and uh, get it set up and Cerakote it. And 
it takes a few minutes to do this right. My next step would be just to come over here to the warm water, hot water in this case. You guys can see that. You just basically want to rinse that thing off real good. And I don't like to leave the water on there very long at all. In this case here, we're, we're dealing with mostly aluminum, so we ain't got to worry too much about nothing. But I just want to make sure that no rust sets up. And it just depends on the situation. Sometimes I might not give it uh, a detergent bath. Sometimes I might just use salt to clean everything. But in this case right here, with the uh, being an old gun like this, and the oil then turned into varnish, I thought it was best to uh, take everything down and make good and sure that all that oil, because some what they lose, it'll stick on the inside of these walls and stuff like that. And just uh, a basic clean with solvent sometimes won't get that out of there. The only way you get that out of there is if you're using solvent or if you're using detergent. Take a brush, clean that real good. Just basically scrub it out of there. That's really the main purpose of doing this, to get that varnish out of there, or that, that oil that doesn't turn to varnish. So that's, that's the term I like to use. It really isn't varnish, but it's about as thick as varnish. So it's going to cause your gun to malfunction. That's why I don't like to put a lot of oil on anything. And just, just a little bit uh, goes a long way with this. Camera's nice and shiny, looking great. I believe that's everything. Always want to double check your vat, make sure you don't throw any parts out with the wash. And what we'll do next in this step, I'm gonna tilt the camera up here while I'm dead. Basically, I'll move it a little closer so maybe you can see a little more what's going on here when I'm fixing to do next. Um, normally, I would bring the parts to the uh, air hose, but since how we're making a video here, I thought I'd just bring the air hose to the parts. So basically, you just want to blow everything off real good. the high pressure air uh, air because it really gets into those crevices and dries all the water up in there and my next step is going to be to uh, you solve it well actually all it is is WD-40 because WD-40 is a water displacing oil now it's not the oil I'm going to use to uh, lube the gun not at all what I will do is I'm gonna carry this back in yonder in the uh, where the workbench is, I'm going to just, you know, spray everything down with WD-40. 
Then I'm going to blow all the WD-40 off of this. That's just the step I take to make good and sure there's no water left behind. And it's a, a good cheap solvent that works great. Not for oiling, you know, so we'll blow all that off and there won't be no WD-40. Maybe a, a fine, a fine layer on the outside that we don't see. We'll oil it with good gun oil. Alright, of course you can see how aluminum does. It's still got that little um, residue looking stuff on there, which that's just the nature of aluminum. I mean, it's clean, but I'm going to get all that off. And usually, you know, you put you some WD-40 or even oil on that, and that'll just totally disappear. All right, I came back in here in the uh, polishing room. Uh, some of this aluminum has got uh, corrosion built up so thick on it, it's almost like a cluster of pits. And what I usually do in a situation like this, uh, of course, we done cleaned it in our detergent, and it's cleaned, but you've got this corrosion that comes back on it after it dries. Of course, like I said, you can put some oil on that, and that probably... Uh, disappear I mean it's still going to be there but you won't be able to see it but I want it to disappear without the oil so what I would do in a case like this is I'd use my wire wheel of course this is aluminum so you want to be kind of careful with it and the finish is going off of it and if it had a finish on it you wouldn't have that corrosion build up on it because the finish would be protecting it it it'd wipe off real nice but it's kind of etched into the aluminum at this point so what I would do in this situation right here I'll just take my wire wheel can see the corrosion on that. Just ever so lightly, just kind of bump over it with your wire wheel. And it's basically like uh, a cluster of pits on steel. It's going to uh, take that corrosion off, but you're still going to have a little mass of uh, pits in that. The only way you can get them pits out is to polish that out. Of course, you know, all I'm doing is cleaning it. He didn't say anything about refinishing it. He decided he wants to uh, Cerakote it, and we will uh, polish those pits out and Cerakote it. Sometimes when you clean aluminum, you don't have to worry about that. This right here has just went so long without a good cleaning that, uh, Let's kind of go the extra step. And that's one of the reasons why I want to make this video here. So this is kind of the worst case scenario. And you're not changing the metal at all. All you're doing is just cleaning out the uh, cleaning off the clusters. Of course, like uh, a cluster of uh, rust on steel, it's going to be some pits under. And that's kind of the same principle here with this aluminum. And of course, I got a Dremel tool that I get on the inside in there. I'm not going to try to do it with this wheel right here, but it's kind of wanted to let you in on that. Again, you know, if it had a finish on it, it wouldn't have to be going through this. Uh, when he gets it back, I'm going to suggest that he keeps a little oil on it. Keep a little oil on it, it should be okay. You can keep it properly clean. that in any way. That's where all your accuracy is. And right up here around the front side. Be real careful with that as well. Just basically, this is a fine wire wheel too. It's not a real coarse one. You don't want to use a coarse wire wheel. You want to get the finest wire wheel you can get. It's right above a nylon wire wheel. A nylon wire wheel won't take it off. That's why I had to get this brass wire wheel. Is a, a fine course wire wheel. And one of the good things about it, it definitely uh, kind of uniforms the finish. Now we've got pretty much a uniform gray finish on it. And you can polish this out to chrome if you really want it to. It'll just tarnish back up though, but kind of the nature of aluminum. 
they have got uh, a powder coat you can put on it, and I think even Cerakote's got a uh, finish you can spray over it like a doorknob would have, and then you can bake that on there, and of course it stays shiny because it's protected for that uh, clear finish. Powder coat offers it, I believe Cerakote does as well. Uh, That'd be an option. This person wanted to have a shiny aluminum gun. Of course, right in these areas right here, the wheel's too thick, so I'll go in there with my nylon brush, my nylon wire, or nylon brush, which is on a motor like this one, and it's in there to pinch, and uh, I'll get to the side there. Oh, I do have one in here. So, we done pretty much got this all taken care of, and there's the well on this right here, I'd use that right there to get into these areas like this right here. And again, if there's any kind of corrosion in there, we'll have to use a little hand uh, brass brush to get that out, but that cleaned that out quite well. I want to make sure we don't leave any uh, we just want to make sure we don't leave any uh, of that uh, varnished oil behind. And I'm satisfied with that. Got all the uh, corrosion off. Of course, there is some little pits left. Let me hold that still where y'all can take a look. And there ain't much you can do with that. All you can do with that is about like a piece of steel. You just have to polish that all in to where it blends. And that's another video. That's a, uh, a refinishing video. In this case here, this is basically a thorough cleaning video. So we'll go back in there at the bench and uh, we will start. Uh, I'll bring the other parts in here, obviously, you know, if they've got the clusters on them. And I'll clean them up like I'm doing right now. Uh, and then we'll go back in there at the uh, bench and we'll start reassembling this baby. All right, here we are back in the polishing room. And what I'm doing back here in the polishing room is I'm going to resurface the uh, heads of the screws. Um, this is just one of the things I like to do whenever I'm uh, cleaning a gun for somebody. I try to make sure there's no surface rust on it when I return it. And I try to make sure that the, the screws ain't all boogered up. So basically, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's kind of kind of chewed up a little bit, all those screws were. So I'm going to resurface that. And what I do is, uh, my advice to anybody who's handling small parts like this, get you something like this right here. It's just an old drill chuck. You can buy them at Harbor Freight or anywhere. Uh, and just put you a little handle on it. And that, that right there is a good holder. Because you try to hold it by, with your hands, most of the time you're going to drop it. And if you like this, like I am, when it hits the floor around here, I don't know where it goes, but you don't ever find it or see it again. So that's my advice. So, a good little holder for anything small like this. Uh, so basically all it just boils down to common sense. I got a, uh, a nylon wheel over here and then I've got the uh, steel wheel in case I need it and what I'm going to use the nylon and steel wheel for is clean out the slot. So I'll kind of demonstrate it for you. Basically clean out the little slot and then just resurface it. And you want to uh, polish with the slot, not against it. Basically, just cleaning it back up is all you're doing. And sometimes I might put a little cold blue on that. Uh, in this case here, because it's not, you know, refinished anyway. Might just leave it in the white. Uh, but anyway, it cleans it up really nice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do all the screws this way. Uh, a lot of times if it's got pins, I'll do the pins the same way. And uh, that'll just make a, a, a nicer appearance and it's a true uh, sign that the gun is clean because obviously in order to do this right here you got to pull the screws all out of it to do it. And of course if you're going to do that might as well take the parts out and hand clean everything. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and then we'll go back in the uh, other part of the shop where the bench is and we'll probably start reassembling it. Okay here we are back in the part of the gun shop where the workbench is and I've got the gun all laid out here on the uh, workbench getting ready to reassemble it but what I've done is I've saturated everything down real good with WD-40 you know and the reason why I did that is because I want to make good and sure that every morsel of water is gone uh, so what I do is I just you know, saturate everything down with the WD-40 take my 
air gun here and just blow everything off real good. WD-40 of a solvent, whatever you might use to displace the oil or to displace the water is probably not necessary because usually after about, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, the water's all, you know, evaporated off there anyway. Uh, I just do that as an extra step. I would advise to do it that way you'll know for sure you're not putting a gun back together that might have um, water in any of the crevices. Um, we just want to make sure we don't have any internal rusting or anything like that. Like I said, I like to make sure that I can see everything and that everything is um, is put back together right and put back together clean and uh, we ain't got to worry about any future problems you know uh, with rusting or anything like that so what I'll do is I will uh, go ahead and finish blowing all this stuff off and then uh, we'll get ready to reassemble this and we'll even test fire it all right here we are and got all the parts all blowed off uh, Everything's checked over, looks really good. Uh, now we'll start assembling it, reassembling it. I guess we'll start off with uh, the mainspring. I hope y'all can see this, cause I'm not behind the camera. Kinda got it positioned down here on the bench, so hopefully everybody can see what's going on. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. Light down here where we can see. And basically it's all just common sense, just There's the hammer spring assembly, all cleaned up. Kind of set that aside. I guess our next step is going to be the uh, empty shell or empty case extractor. We'll go ahead and put that all back together, make good and sure that's good and dry, free of oils and things like that. Here we go. I think for a minute on that one. That's all good and clean up in there. And you'll see how the spring's protruding out the end there. That's normal. So what we're going to do though, here's what I'm going to do. I've got some uh, blue Loctite. We'll open up another one because that in there's just about empty. My suggestion would be, anytime you do something like this right here, I always put you a little blue Loctite on. This is the removable Loctite. That red there is red Loctite that's built out over on the thing there. If you're wondering what that was, it ain't blood. But anyway, we'll just take and uh, put a little bit of the blue Loctite on uh, the ejector. Take a Q-tip, make good and sure everything's good and clean in there. This is the ejector screw hole, so we'll put a little of the blue Loctite in there. Just a little bit. Go ahead and get that assembled back. and like I, say, I apologize if you can't see some of this stuff here. I'm trying to, trying to look as I reassemble here. We'll torque that down, not super strong, just a good moderate torque. You got a torque wrench, you can torque it down, but it isn't really necessary. Just just a good common sense torque, I guess. Good, good way to put that. Okay, there's that. Our next uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, put the uh, pin lock in. And again, Especially on these pin locks, because a lot of these things here get lost. Of course, I've done cleaned it. A little blue Loctite on it. Up inside there. And it'll go on the right side. The long, let me show you. The long side here will go on the right side. And the spring-loaded side will obviously go on the left side.
screw that in basically finger tight. Take a slotted screwdriver and just kind of, it ain't got to be real tight. You want to be careful not to twist that off. So just snug it down. And of course, you got that blue Loctite on there, and that's going to contribute to the holding of it. And basically, all that does, you test it by putting the pin in it. Get that out of the way. Slide that pin in there. And that's just going to hold hold your uh, cylinder pin in. Of course, to get it out, you just push it and pull the pin out. And that just won't stick a little bit, but there it goes. It's loosened up now. Okay, we're good on all that. And now comes the firing pin assembly. We'll double check that to make good sure that we hadn't got any burrs in there. A lot of times what happens with these firing pin assemblies is the burrs, they'll start working up burrs on there and then that thing starts staying stuck out and just everything else. This one right here seems to be in pretty good shape. And if you do have any firing pin burrs, what you would do is put that on your drill press. Let's see. If you can see that or not, but anyway, that's the short end of it. And you'll just kind of just, just, just hit that with a, what like spinning, or just use a file. Let me see. I'm going to hurt to do it for the demonstration for the video. Just get you a file, and just kind of knock any flared edges of it off. You can use the drill press, or you can use a file. It doesn't matter. Drill press would probably do a little bit better job, but. Right here seems to be working quite well. There you go. Just gotta look at that and I'm sticking that in this end right here on purpose. All right. And we'll just put it back in its housing and we see it's freed up real nice. And our next step's going to be, this is the face that's going to be facing the uh, cylinder or the shell rather. It's got a little spring in it and make sure that stays in there and it's got a flat surface cut and what we'll do is we'll just make sure that the flat surface cut is at the bottom I don't know if you can see that or not anyway you got a flat surface cut and it needs to be uh, parallel with the uh, opening where the cylinder is going to slide up in there because if it's any other way the cylinder is not going to go up in there uh, what you could do to be on the safe side, kind of use the cylinder as a gate, go ahead and put that in there. Well, i tell you what let's do, let's go ahead and get it started first. Take your finger and hold that up in there, make sure your spring's still in there. And of course there's your firing pin. And it just threads up on here, because every gun's going to be a little bit different. This particular one right here, J.P. Sires and Son, I believe it is. And I've got a special screwdriver that I made that's cut for this lug and just keep a little pressure on it it ain't got to be super tight at all it's under spring pressure so we ain't got to worry about uh, it coming off every now and then you know it might be a good idea to take a one bladed screwdriver a real small one bladed screwdriver and just kind of check it Turn that little uh, flat flat end there that's uh, on there. Make sure that's up there. And go ahead and put that cylinder in there. Now that we've got that started real good. Of course, you got your cylinder pin here. Go ahead and put that in there as well to hold that into position. There we go. Now. What you might want to do is take a feeler gauge. In this case here, I didn't screw it on there tight enough, so it's coming up a little bit past that. So 
other than taking the uh, cylinder out, I'll just take a um, I got a little filler gauge right here. I'll just put that in there, and that'll kind of help hold that up in there until I get that tight. There we go. And I can see that everything's good in there. And just snug it down. They got to be super tight. I think it's going to give me an opportunity to just say, well, let's don't worry about the filler gauge. Let's just go ahead and, because uh, I've got it pretty tight in, but there's a couple of different ways you can do this. And it was up in there good, but I want to make sure that it's flat against flat. In other words, I want to make sure that this right here is going to be able to uh, accommodate the cylinder. And not only will it go up in there, put your pin in there. You want to make sure it's going to turn both ways. Okay. Now that we got that established, we'll pull that pin out of there. And like I said, I'm putting this uh, together live. Nothing rehearsed here, so uh, we're going to run into a few little quartz here and there and uh, gives me a chance to kind of show you some techniques that I might use to put some stuff back together that I wouldn't get a chance to otherwise all right let me see here now next we'll go ahead and put the hammer in and a lot of times I put things in and put the cart before the horse and had to take things back apart just to get these other parts in because it's hard to kind of memorize all this stuff so we'll make sure that our hand It's assembled. And it's going to go on there like this. It goes on the side of the hammer, like so. And it'll all feed up in there. And you got a little slot there for the hand to go up in. And we'll go ahead and take the uh, hammer screw. And just snug it down. Okay, and we see that's in there, and that's doing really well. Our next step is going to be the uh, trigger and bolt assembly. I always start by putting the bolt or the cylinder lock, whatever technical name they put on it. Different ones get different names. Uh, it's called a bolt. It's called a bolt lock. It's called a cylinder lock. Uh, anyway, it's this piece right here. The little thing's going to lock your cylinder. And I hope y'all can see that. I don't. I can't see very much of what's going on up there with that camera. But anyway, you'll put your trigger on the. Uh, looking at it from the bottom, you'll put the trigger on the right hand side, and then you got a uh, trigger pin that's going to go in. Actually, it's a trigger. Let's see. Make sure it's going to go in the. It's going to go in right in front of the hammer. You may have to kind of pull the hammer down a little bit. Let's go ahead and put the bolt pin in. Snug it up. We ain't gotta be it ain't gotta be tight. It's kind of snug. Then we'll go ahead and put the trigger screw in, which is going to go right behind that. And you'll want to snug that in as well. Replicate the uh, bolt and trigger spring. Okay. And speaking of the bolt and trigger spring, we'll go ahead and put that in next. 
and that's just this little fork like spring that basically is going to rest on top of the bolt and the trigger and you got this screw here that will tighten it up let me just kind of make sure that Loctite's not necessary on these screws here. And not a whole lot of pressure is required for this. Just a good snug feel. And we'll give it a test. There we go. And then pull the trigger. And you can see that the firing pin's sticking out. Then it's rebounding back up where it's supposed to be. And there's a safety notch. This is an old gun, so you got to manually set the safety notch on it when you uh, set the safety on it. Let me let me make a point. Okay, you're getting ready to shoot. You're down at the range. Pow! You pull the trigger. Now you can see the firing pin sticking out there. I think. Hope you can. All right. Now it rebounds back. Okay. Now if you got that live round in there and you drop it, it's going to go off. So you want to make sure on these old guns that you set that. Now it won't because there ain't no way it can hit the firing pin at this point. But some of these old guns, you got to make sure you manually, manually set that. Okay? So, all right. Moving along pretty smooth. Next, we'll put our loading gate on, which is done being clean. Just put that in that little hole there on the right-hand side with the gun up in this position, the right-hand side. Then you got a little spring and plunger, which I apologize, we've got tools strode out everywhere, or parts strode out everywhere, and it just basically falls into the little recess there, open in there, and then the spring follows it. Then you've got your little tension screw, which is going to hold it up in there. No Loctite required. No cross threading required either. Let's make sure that screw's in there like it's supposed to. Don't have to be super tight. That's going to determine how much pressure it's going to be on that. That's about right, right there. Okay, good. So far, so good. All right, our next step is going to be to install the uh, grip frame and trigger guard. And I've got uh, everything laid out in the order I want it laid out in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put just a little bit, I mean just a drop of blue Loctite on all these screws here at the bottom. Not much at all, just a little bit. We'll go ahead and put this in here. And of course your, your main spring, which is going to be the hammer spring will go behind it and what I like to do in a case like this right here you can either undo it for the video's sake let's see well we'll go ahead and put it in like this right here and then we may have to unscrew the uh, the main spring and position it and I've got the screws already laid out over here on the uh, metal in the metal plate here the metal dish and the order they need to go in Just snug everything. Don't even snug it down. Just, just barely uh, put pressure on it. There we go. Now then. With the gun up in this position right here, the screws on the right will go in the right. And they're both the same length. Then put the Loctite in it. Always use a good fitted screwdriver.
always start out with a small screwdriver kind of get everything started real good Set the safety. Okay. Now our next step is going to be to put the uh, back strap on it. We want to make sure that we put a little bit of Loctite in these holes there. Not much. You don't want to put much in there because what will happen is if you put a lot in there, it's going to run down in there and affect other parts. I have uh, put guns together in the early days and put too much Loctite in there and then I thought, well, why ain't this thing working? Come to find out some of that Loctite ran down and started affecting other parts. So I'd have to take it apart and clean all that Loctite off. So that's why I say just a little bit's all you need. And I apologize if you can't see what's exactly going on. Like I said, I don't have a cameraman down here and trying to stay focused on what I'm doing here. We don't want to cross thread anything. Normally I would have this in a vise holding it. We'll get that started in straight. There we go. And we will put the last screw in. Log tight's already in there, so. Good deal. Take the bigger screwdriver and kind of snug everything down, making sure that we don't ring anything. Which is to say you want to make sure that the screwdriver is the same uh, diameter as the hole that the screw is going into. In this case right here, it's not got a finish on it, so it ain't no real big deal, but we just don't want to mar up anything with our screwdriver putting it back together. And we don't want to chew the heads of the screws up because we just resurface them and they look nice. All right. Now, what we'll do now is we'll just kind of put a little oil on it now. We don't got that WD-40 all off of it. Just kind of put a little oil on the pressure points. A little bit down inside there. And what I usually like to do is put it on kind of generously. And then I'll take my air hose and kind of distribute it around in there. Being careful not to blow all the parts off the bench. bit on this pin right here very little and you'll notice I haven't run a bore brush through the barrel or the chambers yet that's coming up here in a few minutes they look clean anyway I don't see not, nothing going in there at all but we'll do that anyway just for good measure and locked in. All right. All right, got it all put back together. My battery kind of went down on my camera here, so uh, basically just all I liked was putting the grips on it. So anyway, we got them on there. It looks great. Looks a whole lot better than it did. It's got the uh, patina look to it. 
Okay, uh, we just test fired it, shot real well. Uh, good little revolver. I guess this is kind of a uh, cleaning slash safety uh, video, if you will. Basically, uh, uh, I just wanted to kind of point these things out with this particular model here. This here is a model, uh, it's a JP Sauer and Son, kind of an old revolver. Uh, it's a LA Western six shooter model. 22 long rifle. Uh, you know, the only thing, as I mentioned earlier about these guns is, uh, and even some of the new ones you might, might want to watch out for, is uh, the little safety mechanism. You got to set that by hand. You hear that little click? That shows me that it's set. Now, of course, when you shoot it, sometimes they'll rebound and set themselves, but sometimes they just wore out and they won't. This one right here will not set itself. So you have to set that. If you don't, and you got a live round in there and you drop it and it hits that hammer, it's probably going to go off. But if you set that, then that's going to keep that hammer from going forward. Of course, you don't want to take a hammer to it and drop it real hard or anything. It's probably going to break the little uh, notch that's up in that hammer there and it's going to probably go off anyway. So that's just a little safety mechanism they put on it. This is just one of the older guns and, and that's really the best uh, that you can um, hope for on this one. Um, like I said, we shot it, shot good. I'm real pleased with it. And, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, my number here is area code 615-746-9668. Uh, just give me a call if you need any uh, guns cleaned, if you need any blue or whatever, you know, I've got videos. Just pull up Scotty's Gunworks gun videos, and most of the time that'll pull them all up. I think it's probably just as easy for folks should just pull up Scotty's Gunworks gun videos and most time they'll get uh, all the videos that show everything that I do down here uh, just give me a call at that number I just gave you and we'll just kind of discuss it and kind of play it all by ear and uh, see if we can't uh, take care of you on whatever project you may have be going on nothing else I can probably answer some questions that'll help you do it yourself uh, so as usual I appreciate everybody watching these videos